guys, so today we're going to be doing a really cute mug warmer. It's very easy for beginners um, and works up very, very quickly. So let's get started. You will need a mug. This is the one I'm using. It's kind of short and wider, but I'm going to go over how to use any mug. Um, I'm also using Red Heart Unforgettable in Sunset, which is a worsted weight yarn. Any worsted weight will work, and then I'm using an eye size hook. So I'm going to start with a chain of 15. So here's my chain 15. And I'm just going to double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So for those beginners out there, let's look at the second chain from the hook. We're going to go in that second one with a double crochet. Pull through the first two loops and then pull through the second two loops. And then we're going to double crochet all the way down the line. So we should wind up with 13 double crochets. Now, you can definitely modify this. So any mug that you have, um, no matter how wide it is, how tall it is, um, you can adjust this. So the way that you're going to go about that is our foundation chain right now is basically it needs to fit um, the height of your mug. So we'll hold it up to um, my mug here in a moment but if you need to increase this foundation chain because you have a taller thinner mug or an even wider um, shorter mug you can make this chain longer or shorter you can do any chain length so if you need to do 10 chains if you need to do 25 chains um, whatever works for you that fits your mug so just make sure to double crochet in each of those stitches all the way down and for now, this is the only adjustment that we're going to make. We're going to look at another possible adjustment to fit any other mug in a moment. So there we are finishing our last double crochet. Go ahead and tighten that slip knot, and then we're going to chain up two. So there's our row of double crochets. Now we need to grab our mug, lay it on its side so we're looking at the height of the mug, and just lay your work right there and we want it to fit nicely we don't want any overhang on the bottom or the top of the mug so it just needs to fit the height of the mug there so for me those 13 double crochets with a starting chain of 15 works perfect so now we've just turned our work and we're going to continue double crocheting um, all the way down so you're basically just having several rows of 13 double crochets in my case um, and for my mug to make it fit nicely I'm doing 23 rows of double crochets so total I'll have 23 rows of 13 double crochets but here's where you'll need to alter your pattern again if you're using a different size or different type of mug you're definitely going to make more rows or less rows depending on um, how wide around your mug is, the circumference of your mug. So I would definitely go about this by, um, you know, making 10 or 12 rows and then testing it and wrapping it around your mug to see if you're anywhere near uh, it touching in the back. You don't want them, the beginning foundation chain and your last row to be actually meeting in the back. You want about an inch to an inch and a half of uh, space because we're going to be doing a button attachment so you want to leave some space there but just keep going until it wraps all almost all the way around so for me and my mug that's 23 rows and you're more than welcome to start with that and you can either pull some out or add some more um, depending on how it seems to fit your particular mug so just keep going with rows of double crochets with a chain two and turn at the end of each row and see how far you get. So now here is the 23 rows that I've finished for mine and again that number can be different depending on your mug and the specifics of what you're making. So there's 23 rows and we just want to grab our mug and make sure that when you wrap it around you have just enough room for your button and your buttonhole. So you should have a little bit over probably an inch of space between the two. 
So here you can see how mine's looking before I do the buttonhole. So once we've, we're happy with the length of our piece of crocheted work, you can go ahead and take it off of there and we're going to create the button loop. So go ahead and insert your hook back into your work and we're going to just make some slip stitches across that last row of double crochets. So now looking at our last row of double crochets, we're going to be working some slip stitches halfway across and then the rest of the way. So we're going to make six slip stitches and then we're going to make our button loop. So for me, six is about halfway across because I have a width of 13 double crochets. But if you only have, you know, a width of 10 double crochets, just go five across or whatever is about the halfway mark. So I'm doing six slip stitches which is about halfway, and then I'm going to chain up eight. So this chain of eight is the perfect size for me because I'm using a larger button, um, a larger decorative button, but if you're using a smaller button, you don't need a chain length as long. You could stop at five or six. Um, you could definitely try different things, but start with eight and see where you get. And then we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch in the very next stitch. Don't skip any of those double crochets underneath. Just go ahead and slip stitch your chains back down in that next one and continue slip stitching all the way across the rest of your work. And once you've slip stitched across, we can see that that button loop is shaped nicely and we can just go ahead and snip our yarn and then finish off. So now the next and last step of our mug warmer is getting our button into place. So I found this decorative button, I think at Joann's on clearance. Um, I picked it up a while ago with no real plan of how I was going to use it. Um, but I'm going to use it here on this mug warmer. So we want to put it on the other end of our finished work from the buttonhole loop. Make sure you're not sewing it down on the same end of your work as where your buttonhole loop is. So we just need to grab a little piece of yarn and go ahead and snip it off of the skein. Probably just about, you know, 10 or 12 inches long or so. And we need to thread a tapestry needle. Make sure that you're using a smaller darning needle for this because you want it to be able to fit through the eyes of the buttonhole. So it may be a little bit more difficult to thread your yarn um, through a smaller darning needle, but most buttons, those buttonholes are pretty small. So it's definitely harder to get like a larger plastic yarn needle through there. So just make sure you're centered and I don't position my button right on the edge where that foundation chain is. I move it a little bit further in just to make sure it's a little bit more secure and not pulling on that very edge foundation chain. So just sew that into place. And I just knot mine on the other side and weave in those ends. So now all of my ends are weaved in and our mug warmer is finished we just have to put it on our mug and make sure it fits nicely so go ahead and wrap that around I put the loop through the handle of the mug it just seems to fit nicer and I don't want to pull that um, length of double crochets through the mug handle I just like the way that it looks with the button right there right next to the handle of the mug so adjust it however you like and make sure it's positioned right and now we can see how it looks and it is beautiful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.